OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, is a problem for many Americans, but it's not well understood by many people, and there aren't many medical practitioners and counselors with the background to identify and treat it. Denise Stack of OCD Massachusetts came in to talk about this condition, and a local lecture series underway now to raise awareness and understanding about OCD. OCD is a very serious mental health condition that affects about 1% of the population at any given time and 2 to 3% of the population during a lifetime. And if someone is diagnosed with OCD, then basically what it means is that they're experiencing unwanted, intrusive, uncomfortable thoughts, we call them obsessions, that create anxiety. And some of those obsessions might be uh, a fear of something bad happening to someone you love or a fear of getting sick. Like I said, it increases someone's anxiety and then they feel compelled to engage in a series of behaviors, we call compulsions, that are designed to hopefully alleviate that anxiety. So if someone had a fear of something bad happening, the obsession causes anxiety. The compulsion might be to uh, check and recheck and recheck again the stove in the kitchen to make sure it's off so that the house doesn't burn down. Or if someone had a fear of getting sick, they might wash their hands over and over again to alleviate the anxiety associated with the uncertainty of whether or not they'd get sick. Every behavior you mentioned there mm -hmm. is pretty normal mm -hmm. up to a point. Up to a point, exactly. And I wonder at what point does a professional mm -hmm. say, and I, I guess the answer is when it becomes a problem, but mm -hmm. at what point do you say to someone, you know that's something maybe we ought to talk about, we ought to look at, mm -hmm and perhaps deal with. Right. When it causes distress in people and when it starts to interfere with their ability to function in their lives. So when a young child is unable to go to school or unable to perform in school, when um, a, an adult is, has difficulty getting to work on time, when it's interfering in a marriage, a, 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 uh, an adult's ability to care for their child, or a child's inability to go to sleep at night. So whenever it's impacting their ability to function and when it causes distress, usually um, you know, that's, that is the diagnostic criteria that we're looking at that will help us determine between someone being quirky or sub-threshold and someone having a true diagnosed obsessive compulsive disorder. And I suppose with the examples you mentioned there, you really almost have to think of a family having mm -hmm. OCD mm -hmm. because if someone is seriously impacted, mm -hmm. So is everyone that, that deals with them or lives with them, all their loved ones as well. Absolutely. So I've been doing home-based therapy for the last 20 years. So I've been working with children, adolescents, and adults with OCD. And I've chosen to go into the home to perform therapy because you're right. Um, a lot of it happens in the home context, but also families involved. And so I believe, and I think over the course of 20 years, I'd say anecdotally that um, it's a much more effective and efficient way to treat people because you are including their loved ones. So they need to know how to respond. Oftentimes people will get embroiled in the OCD symptoms. They'll start washing their, their hands themselves. They might be offering lots and lots of reassurance and they need coaching on how to get themselves, extract themselves from the OCD behaviors as well. So you're right. Let's talk about one of the reasons you're specifically here with us in Western Massachusetts right mm -hmm. now. There's a series of lectures mm -hmm. underway this year mm -hmm in Northampton, exactly. I believe, explaining to both the public and to medical practitioners, mm -hmm. as I understand it, mm -hmm. OCD, because that's an important. Tell us about that series of uh, presentations. Series? So OCD Massachusetts, among many other things, um, hosts several lecture series throughout the state. So we, right now we have one running at McLean Hospital in Belmont, another at UMass Medical School in Worcester. And this past September, with the help of Dr. Randy Frost, we've introduced to Massachusetts our third lecture series at Smith College. So uh, the lectures run uh, the third Tuesday of every month. They're free and open to the public. Uh, people that which means people don't have to register. They don't have to pay anything to come. They can just drop by and every month we explore a topic related to living with OCD. So past topics have included uh, treatment for children with OCD, how to navigate OCD in the workplace, and future topics will include um, how to use mindfulness in the treatment of OCD and other mental health conditions. In reading some of the uh, material that your folks, your, your public relations people sent me, there's a need, you feel, to improve understanding, knowledge, and access to resources, and really the amount of resources available to help folks with OCD. Absolutely. Uh, so our mission is to develop 
uh, programming for people living in the Bay State who've been affected by OCD. But it's even more important to me, being a Western Mass native, um, I'm very well aware of the fact that west of 495, there's almost nothing here OCD specific for people who are struggling. So there's a handful of very dedicated clinicians several very dedicated clinicians, but beyond, beyond that, there's not much more. There, there may be one or two support groups, and there are no specialty outpatient, intensive outpatient, or partial hospital programs for people with OCD. So given it's such a large geographic area, and there's so many people here, 1% right now, in Western Massachusetts struggling with this, a handful of clinicians just isn't going to cut it. So we're hoping that the, introdu the introduction of this lecture series and support group program, we can start to build a broader network of treatment resources in a more vibrant community uh, you know, for the people to engage in as they navigate life with this devastating illness. So it sounds like your concern coupled with that is people are going undiagnosed or misdiagnosed, mm -hmm. and that means no help, no treatment. No help, no treatment. So. Oftentimes, people who are struggling with OCD, you're right, don't know what they are struggling with, or it takes them years and years to get access to effective treatment. I mean, Massachusetts is the medical mecca, right? And in Western Massachusetts, west of 495, there are about five or six people who specialize in treating OCD and two support groups. So people do not have access to effective treatment, but they're often struggling in silence and in shame. And so we also want to work to destigmatize the, this mental illness. And one of the things OCD Massachusetts wants to do is to advocate, to lobby for folks in the state mm -hmm. and their families mm -hmm. who have this problem mm -hmm. and need some services. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We want to make sure that people living out throughout Massachusetts, but people living in western Massachusetts have what they deserve. You know, they have access to... Uh, quality programming, they have access to um, reliable and up-to-date information about what the disorder is and effective treatments are, and I keep saying community, access to a community that they can engage in to help them navigate this. Someone watching at home, light bulb may have gone off and said, you know, that sounds like something that's bothering me or someone in the family, someone I know. How can they find out some more, get some more information, not just about OC, you know, OCD Massachusetts, but about the speakers program right now in Northampton? Uh, OCDMassachusetts.org. Um, that is our, that's the affiliate website. It'll tell you everything that we have going on in the state. And if people are interested in learning more about what's going on in a national or international level, um, they should visit IOCDF.org. Very good. Thank you for your time with us. Pleasure to have you with us talking about obsessive compulsive disorder. Thank you.